Lil J has been locked away on weapons charges. He was released earlier than expected on April 12th, 2022, and Lil Durk had a lot to say about it. But before I get to that, let me explain the beef between these two. Lil J, the Chirac Wolverine, is a known GD who has ties with FBG Duck and Tuka. J was once a BD until he moved to 63rd in St. Lawrence and has claimed GD since. Right before J switched up, 600 was just beginning to start, and it was even rumored that he wanted to join. But once they found out that he was hanging with some guys from Jaro, his request to join was turned down, and they stopped hanging around him. Ever since he converted to GD, he has been getting dissed left and right by the other side. But this beef between the artists started March 28, 2012, after Lil Durk dropped his track, L's Anthem. This song really lit the flame in this ongoing beef between him, FBG, and Wooga World. FBG, or Flyboys Gang, is a group started by FBG Duck that has a long-standing feud with Lil Durk, Chief Keef, and many more BD artists. Wooga World is a GD set located on 74th in Hartford that was formed after the death of Sugar, who was murdered in 2001. Wooga World is allied with Brick Squad, another set that has a notorious beef with the BDs. In this song, Dirk says, Brick Squad, I say f*** em. Wooga World with him, so f*** em. This song was so disrespectful. It was even one of the main reasons Lil Jojo dropped his viral hit song, BDK. In BDK, Lil Jojo says, Dirk said f*** Brick Squad, so I can't wait to catch him. Squeeze this f***ing 40. Now they got him on a stretcher. Jojo was later murdered on September 4th, 2012 while riding on the back of pegs of his friend's bike throughout the streets of Inglewood. Dirk took this chance to get more disses in, adding more fuel to the flame. On May 5th, 2013, Dirk dropped his hit single, This Ain't What You Want, and in this song, he raps a n- claiming 300, add a K and you done. But this subliminal line wasn't enough for Dirk, so he went to Twitter to say a few words as well. Whoever say 300k, lol. Y'all broke this, won't have a chance to see 300k. Dirk tweets. This tweet caught the attention of many Brick Squad affiliates, and some even responded. But Dirk, being the menace, he continued to drop tweets. On September 8th, 2013, Dirk tweeted, Banshee is the best bikes, mocking Lil Jojo's death. He also tweets, might be still alive if he had a Banshee. Man, Chicago used to get real disrespectful with the Twitter dissing. Their accounts would have been banned if it took place in today's world. This is when FBG dragged themselves into this drama, disrespecting Dead 300 and 600 members. FBG Duck and Lil J sent out the most tweets regarding this situation. They started by dissing Jerome Wood or J Money. Sorry for y'all loss, and we gonna miss you, boy. We're just a few of Duck's tweets mocking the deceased 300 affiliate. Lil J, on the other hand, his tweets were a bit more vocal. Guess it was macaroni time for J Money on Death Roads was just one of J's many tweets disrespecting Wood. But after L.A. Capone was killed a few weeks later, on September 17th, 2013, Lil J dissed Dirk once again. The very same day, J tweeted, LA was a good boy. And he followed up with, I remember me, Brick, JoJo, Butter, and Duck used to beat Lil LA's ass on the bus 35 coming from Dunbar on Tuca. Lil J wasn't done though. A few months later, he tweeted, RIP, Sheroid, LA, and J Money. Rest in piss. Man, Lil J had no filter at all. But what can you expect when the entire Chicago is tweeting like this? Dirk responded with a post on Instagram. Instagram of a picture of Lil J on an episode of National Geographic's Drug Inc. He captioned the post, LOL, what the f***, Chicago Police Department foo-foo-ass niggas be dry snitching. But they out here, Lil J responded with a tweet saying, you gonna see how much we out here when your clown die, like J Money STL 063 BDK. I'm out here right now. Lil J even allegedly confronted and chased Dirk down, but Dirk denies this meeting ever happened. They had a small back and forth about the chase allegations until Dirk caused it quit. Once he tweeted, I'm not retweeting y'all or mentioning y'all no more. I'ma kill you with success. On October 10th, 2013, Lil Durk dropped his debut mixtape, Signed to the Streets. In the song competition, Dirk says, catch Lil J, I beat his face. My d***s will meet with them. Lil Duck, he can't duck this clip. Wooga World K, cause they fuck with them. In this line, he was referring to Lil J, FBG Duck, and Wooga World. Dirk even refers to this track as a message to the ops. Because he dissed almost all of his ops in it. Once Jay found out about this song, he tweeted at Dirk saying, I'm really at your head now. Creep followed with gun emojis. He then went on to drop his song, Take You Out Your Glory. In this response track, he says, OTF like vegetarians, cause them don't want beef. Lil Rob was in his glory until he 
got hit with the heat for Tuka and Jojo and BT. We in these streets. BDK till I die. Dirk completely ego Lil J and said on Twitter that Lil J has to pay him $20,000 for him to diss him again. Lil J responded saying that Dirk already gave him all the clout that he wanted. Lil Dirk got locked up on November 6, 2014 for weapons violations but was freed on November 13th and Lil J saw that as an opportunity to secure more clout off the rapper. Lil J went on Instagram to further talk about the situation asking how Dirk is out on his third bond and claiming that he must be working with the police but the fuel kind of ran out on this beef until Lil J started to strike it back up when he invited Lil Dirk and Chief Keef to a put the guns down hands up fight challenge. J made a post on Instagram saying how he had 50 grand to fight Lil Dirk and 100 to fight Chief Keef. After the two Chicago superstars ignored this invite, Jay posted a video on Instagram saying how he's trying to beat them up and take their money, but they're dodging him. It really seems like Jay was reaching for some clout with this one. I guess this is why he goes by the name Clout Lord. On Monday, January 5th, 2015, Lil Jay was arrested and charged with reckless discharge of a firearm, and his bail was set to $400,000. After Jay couldn't post bond, Chicago rapper Lil Reese went on Twitter and said, Lil J broke still locked up bond out or something Lil Dirk chimed in too saying how this got 50k but can't bond out social sites is an mf -er. he was referring to the 50k that Jay offered in the guns down hands up challenge FBG was really losing this beef with the main members Duck being killed Lil J locked up and Wooski being crippled but it wasn't over yet after serving 7 years and being released in 2022 Lil J was still living up to his name the clout lord once Lil J was released from prison he immediately posted a video on Instagram to let the ops know he's back uh, yeah, he's yeah, double O back, girl. Honestly, it seems like prison didn't teach Jay much because he didn't even wait a whole day before masking up and hitting the streets. Lil Dirk saw that he was free and went on Instagram to throw a slick shot at him saying, send me that sh** of dude from the rack telling so I can post it, hinting that Lil Jay snitched to get out early. But Jay didn't even respond to this sub diss. Instead, he dropped a single title, First Day Clout, where he addressed all the snitching rumors. In this song, he said, Trying to spread rumors on Double O. I don't know why. They said I snitched. They said I'm gay. Them both is a lie. I put that on Kai. I swear that niggas had a lot to say when I was inside. Now the niggas quiet. He even dissed King Von and D Thang, two people that were very close to Lil Dirk and have recently passed away. Jay has also spoken about Dirk in his latest Say Cheese interview, where he claims that he salutes Dirk, but he is the new face of rap. Dirk may be the hottest Chicago. He is the hottest Chicago man, rapper. He was, man. <laughs> he was. He was. Give him his, I salute him though, man, you know. It is what it is. I'm the, yeah. I'm the face of this shit though. Lil J is clearly trying to get this beef back popping in full effect, and it seems to be working. But before you go, check out this video for me. This is you. Or at least it could be you. You've been island hopping through Greece with a group of... Jonathan Kirk, or The Baby, is a popular Charlotte rapper, or should I say street fighter, that has been all through the media for his most recent fight in Walmart shooting footage. He talked about how the Walmart situation really went down, but let me explain how he even got here first. The Baby was born in Cleveland, Ohio, and moved to Charlotte, North Carolina when he was six years old. The Charlotte rapper had it pretty tough coming up. He was raised around robbers and killers, so he definitely has seen some things he probably shouldn't have seen as a child. He made a good living in the streets by the age of 17, and even even was pulling up the condos and foreign whips by 21. I guess you can say the baby had it all figured out at a pretty young age. That was until June 15th, 2013. The baby got himself into a sticky situation that honestly probably saved his life. The superstar was caught with drugs and firearms, landing him in jail on a $500 bond. He bonded out later that day, and we have yet to find out the outcome of the case. But we can assume that he was just given probation because in North Carolina, these two charges are only misdemeanors. And this was only his first time getting a Arrested. Later on throughout the year, the baby caught two more drug charges, one even being a felony. These charges likely motivated the baby to get out of the streets and start rapping full time. Because in December of 2014, the baby sold almost all his cars and his condos to pay for studio sessions, video shoots, and more expenses linked to rap. On April 7, 2015, the baby released his debut album, Nonfiction, Fiction, under the name he used to go by, Baby Jesus. But people found his name to be kind of offensive, but he changed it to the baby as he started to take off in his career. And even though the baby has now reached superstar status, he still continues to get himself into legal trouble. One being when he was just chilling in his luxury apartment and six guys ran in, causing him to go into full-blown John Wick mode and defend
defend himself as the thieves tried to rob him. He claims he just came from the club, laid across his bed, and started to doze off when he suddenly heard some men running and yelling. He said he instantly jumped, grabbed his gun, and hit the corner, shooting at the men, hitting one in the leg. The men started to shoot back, but the baby retreated out the back and exited through the garage. But this is nothing compared to the 2018 Walmart shooting. Just weeks before the Charlotte rapper signed his deal with Interscope, he was shopping in Walmart with his family on Monday 5th, 2018, when he was approached by two guys that were allegedly threatening to rob him and claiming they'll meet him outside. The baby charged at one of the guys, and after wrestling him for a while, the other guy pulled out his gun, so the baby pulled out his and shot at the two. One guy passed away on the spot, and the other was rushed to the hospital. After being charged for murder, the baby pleaded self-defense and was only let off with the weapons misdemeanor that got him one year of probation. Once he was released, the baby went on Instagram to address the situation, explaining how if it was anyone else protecting their family, they would have done the same. In 2019, he further spoke about this in an interview with the Billboard, saying how any legal situation that he's involved in isn't his fault, and he's going to stand on what he stands on. This actual CCTV footage of this shooting was leaked earlier this month, and the baby spoke on it once again, but I'm going to get to that later. I guess you can even say that the rapper is nearly a street boxing champion, because in May 2019, the baby got into a fight in a Louis Vuitton store with now-deceased rapper Cam Colehart. Cam was recording the baby while he was shopping, threatening the rapper, and saying he isn't about that life. That's when the baby started to record Cam right before throwing a punch and brutally beating him up. The baby came back on camera, showing Cam lying on the ground, leaking from the face. This viral moment really started the baby's fighting career because on January 3rd, 2020, he went full mafia boss mode. A Miami promoter agreed with the baby to perform for $30,000 at Cafe Iguana Pines, a nightclub in Pembroke Pines, Florida. After the rapper finished performing, the two met at Novotel Brickle, a hotel in Miami where the promoter only paid him $20,000. This led to an argument and a big fight. The baby and his crew jumped and robbed the promoter for paying him $10,000 less than promised. He also allegedly stole $80, an iPhone 7, and a credit card from the promoter. Reports also say that he even doused the guy with apple juice. The man fled in a black SUV, but after the baby returned to the hotel, he was taken into custody. The police questioned him on what went down, but he claimed he had nothing to do with the incident. He spent 48 hours in jail before being released and charged with battery. The baby went to Twitter to defend himself, saying the police are just trying to make a bad example out of him, when in reality, he's the most positive example out of Charlotte. But this next situation, I really don't agree with, but he did come back with a public apology explaining what happened. On March 7, 2020, the baby was walking through the crowd, about to perform on a stage at a concert in Tampa, when he was seen on camera slapping a female after she shined her phone flashlight in his face. After he made it to the stage, he started to get booed. This made him leave the venue before he even got a chance to perform. After watching the other angle of the video, the baby went on Instagram and apologized to the girl, saying how he was blinded by the flash and couldn't tell if it was a man or a woman. I sincerely apologize. I do. I'm very sorry that there was a female on the other end of that flashlight on that phone. But you know, keep in mind, I couldn't see you. This close to me. The baby also got into a fight with his ex's brother after the couple got into a bad argument on Instagram Live. He was seen chilling at a bowling alley with some of his friends when Brandon, Danny Lay's brother, pulled up and approached the rapper. After a few words were exchanged, the baby threw a punch and his security team took over from there, struggling to fight Danny's brother across the slippery bowling alley. On April 13th, 2022, TMZ posted a 911 call of the baby explaining to the operator how he just shot a man outside of his home that was trespassing passing on his property. Okay. And what's going on there? Uh, uh, Got you passing on my property. Here you go. Sir, what did you do? Uh, I shot him in his leg. Okay. And what did you do? He's passing on He's on my property. He broke his silence on this situation two days later when he posted this clip from the movie Paid in Full. Hey, yo, hey, niggas get shot every day, B. You be all right, nigga. You tough, right? He captioned it, chose not to take a life the other day, and it felt great. Heal up and live, my boy. Just don't bring your ass back. I bet he's not going to be back there anytime soon. And less than two weeks later, the baby found himself in another fight, this time with his own artist, Wisdom. The baby signed Wisdom to Billion Dollar Baby in 2020 and even spoke good about him in interviews. The two have performed together multiple times since, and he's even featured on Wisdom's debut album, Up and Coming. That was until April 22nd, when someone on Instagram posted a video of the 
baby walking backstage at the Spring Jam 2020 event in South Carolina when the rapper suddenly turned around and swung at Wisdom. The two got a few punches off before security broke them up. They continued to threaten and curse each other out as they walked their separate ways. The baby never addressed this fight, but the person that posted it had his back. They said, I don't condone violence. I just happened to be there when it happened. The baby had a solid reason. I'm not taking his side, but I see why he did what he did. I got the whole video and I'm going to tell you why the baby did what he did. This isn't the only time these two have gotten into some trouble though. In May 2021, both the baby and Wisdom were detained by police following a shootout in Miami. Wisdom was arrested and charged with attempted murder with a deadly weapon and aggravated assault with a firearm and the baby was released the day after the incident with no criminal charges against him. But the latest drama the rapper has found himself in is actually linked to the footage that was dug up from four years ago. On April 24th, 2022, footage of the Walmart shooting finally made it to the internet for the world to see. On Monday, April 25th, 2022, Hot 97 host Ebro tweeted, why are people acting like the 2018 video of the baby's Walmart incident wasn't already seen by Walmart, the police, and the courts? The baby responded to this tweet saying, because the media got their ass brainwashed. And since the case is already closed and they have already come to their decision, they cannot reopen it. It is kind of weird how this footage just came out of nowhere four years later. But before you go, check out this video. I got $34,246. I got 34000 a little over three years ago, Jamel Maurice Demons, more known as YMW Melly, turned himself in for the murder of two friends that took place in late 2018. From showing off new shoes, releasing new music, and even saying he's coming home soon, YMW Melly has made these past few years look like a cakewalk. But in these same years, he has also endured some of his hardest times behind bars, including fights, behavior issues, and even facing the death penalty. So today, we're going to take a look at YMW Melly's life behind bars. But before we jump straight into it, let me provide you with a brief rundown on how he even got here. YNW Sack Chaser and YNW Juvie were shot and killed while riding home through the streets of Fort Lauderdale with their two friends, YNW Melly and YNW Bortland. Melly was dropped off on the way while Bortland proceeded to drive the two wounded men to the hospital. And if you don't already know, whenever you arrive to the hospital with gunshot wounds, the police will always be immediately notified. So shortly after the three arrived at the hospital, the police pulled up and started asking questions. Portland tried his best to explain the situation, saying that they were involved in a drive-by shooting. But the police knew something was up because after asking multiple witnesses, everyone's story was slightly different. After the police put in months of investigation, they were finally able to draw up a possible scenario saying that the two men were shot from inside the car, linking the murders to Melly and Portland, and dismissing the entire drive-by story. Bortland was arrested first on February 12, 2019, and Melly already saw it coming, so he just went on ahead and turned himself in the very next day. The beloved Florida artist posted a picture on Instagram stating in the caption that he is to be turning himself in, and all of the rumors that he is guilty are false. Melly was clearly trying to make the best of his time while he was locked away, because the rapper was reportedly spending $4,000 a month on commissary, buying snacks, playing cards, headphones, books, and many more miscellaneous items like reading glasses, ibuprofen, and I miss you cards to send to his family back home. My boy Melly was going crazy in the chain gang. And despite most of the other inmates in jail having a low commissary average, Melly seems to max out his spending limit every week. Melly was even seen on Instagram smiling and holding up a pair of thousand dollar Versace shoes. Melly has also dropped some hit tracks while locked up like Mama Cry, Dangerously in Love, and many more, including features from Lil Uzi Vert, Kodak Black, and an artist that we all miss dearly, Juice World. He even dropped an entire album titled Melly vs. Melvin that peaked at number eight on the Billboard charts. But while living the lavish lifestyle in jail, he was also in there giving the officers a hard time. Melly's first behavioral incident took place only a month after he was incarcerated. On March 13th, 2019, Melly made a three-way call, which is against the rules of jail, landing him in solitary confinement for 30 days with no privileges. Two months later, Melly was charged with disrespecting and threatening an officer. 
This earned him another 20 days of solitary confinement and loss of all of his privileges. Melly was in there acting like a pure demon because in September of the same year, Melly was caught stuffing a towel into the toilet of his cell and flushing it until the cell was completely flooded. What kind of elementary school prank was he trying to pull? Once the officer who caught him reported the situation, he also claimed that Melly did this on purpose and even threatened him. Melly allegedly said to the officer, yeah, I flooded it. Now go get your sergeant. I'll beat all y'all. And I have real lawyers to get me out of it. That's some pure menace energy right there. Shortly after this, he was set to serve yet another 20 days in solitary. Lost all his privileges once again. And on top of that, they threw in a 10-day probation sentence with it. At this point, I'm starting to think that he enjoys being alone in solitary confinement because he just keeps going back. Then, in February 2020, Melly was seen participating in a fight with five other inmates. This large brawl took several deputies to break it up. This altercation led him to getting sentenced to another 30 days in solitary. And as you can guess by now, his privileges taken away yet again. In his first year of jail, Melly has already spent a total of 70 days in solitary confinement. That's insane. But those are just a few of his behavioral issues. Melly has also faced some problems regarding his health. On April 2nd, 2020, Melly tested positive for the virus after his cellmate was also tested positive. Melly's lawyer saw this as an opportunity to temporarily get the rapper out of jail and put him on house arrest. On the same day, Melly's lawyer requested for the artist to be put on house arrest in case he needed any medical help involving the virus. This seemed like a foolproof plan because 6 9 was released earlier that year for the same reason. His attorney even posted an update on Instagram stating that the Broward jail was very unsanitary and had inmates and employees sharing lunch trays and other items without proper sanitation. Sources also stated stated that Melly was experiencing headaches, body aches, chills, and even labor breathing. But Melly got the short end of the stick. His request was denied, and the judge pretty much told him, all the medical help you need is available right here. But since the virus was still fairly new to the world, the jails weren't properly equipped to treat the rapper. It was even rumored that the jail only provided Melly with Gatorade and Tylenol. That won't even fix a bad migraine. The staff is also accused of not checking up on Melly hourly like they were instructed to leaving everyone to worry about his health as it was rapidly deteriorating. That's just poor service all around, if you ask me. And it only gets crazier from here because Melly has also had many bumps throughout his time fighting these legal battles. When the initial information was gathered on the case, it was pretty clear that Melly wasn't innocent. The feds used every resource they could to find and try to get this artist locked up. They even worked with T-Mobile to get all of his phone records showing where the men traveled that night. This information showed that Melly was confirmed to be in the car with the victims and got dropped off before they took the trip to the hospital. It wasn't looking too good for the Florida rapper because he initially lied and said that he was never even in the car. The feds also took a deep look into Melly's social media, linking one of his posts of him saying, With the Remitly app, you can send money to loved ones worldwide with complete peace of mind. he needs to stay loyal to Bortland to the murder. This made sense because they previously accused Bortland of working with Melly and covering the entire situation up. It's crazy how these smartphones can get you caught up so easily. A year after his arrest, the prosecutor sat back and took a really good look at this case. And since it was such a heinous crime, they gave Melly two options. He could go to trial and possibly receive the death penalty, or he could skip trial and just get an instant 30 to 40 years in prison. They even tried making the case stronger by saying he's a gang member by using his face tattoos and videos of him stacking hand symbols as proof. The families of the two victims are more interested in pushing the death penalty, which I can completely understand. This left Melly in a sticky situation, but he didn't fold. I believe the rapper has a really good feeling that he will get off as innocent. And even though the feds had all those scenarios drawn up linking Melly to the murder, they still lacked enough evidence to convict him. So they laid low for a while, continuing to hold Melly without bond while they gathered more information and drew up more possible scenarios. It was until February of this year, two years later, when the feds came out with 66, yes, you heard that right, 66 pages of DNA evidence a month before the trial was set to begin. I'm not gonna lie, 66 pages? It's crazy. Melly might be toast in this one. And as DJ Academics called it, the trial was postponed due to the last minute evidence drop. All I'm saying is that they're providing this less than a month out before trial. Look for this case to be postponed if you ask me. 
Melly's trial was pushed back to May 23rd, giving Melly some more time to get the DNA evidence analyzed and build up some more defense before his sentencing. The prosecutors then provided Melly with a list of all witnesses they had against him, including his ex-girlfriend and her mom. But he wasn't too cool with that. Melly immediately filed a motion to prevent these two from even showing up because he feels like they would sabotage him and his career. But the feds weren't done yet. The prosecutors summoned popular cameraman Drew filmed it to the stand. Drew filmed it is a well-known cameraman that has shot many music videos for Florida artists like Glock 9, Hot Boy, and even Louisiana artist Fred O'Bain. They're most likely wanting to go through his SD card or his hard drive to find any video or audio footage or any conversations that could possibly lead to more information on this case. This is the same way they got young boy. The cameraman's footage was used against him in court, but Drew kept his street and never showed up at all to testify against Melly. He's a real one for that. However, the prosecutors are now trying to threaten Drew with jail time if he doesn't show up. So he lawyered up and is trying to get them to further prove why they need him in court and what he has to do with this case. Right now, it seems like it's Melly against the world because these prosecutors are coming hard with the evidence. And they're really trying to turn everyone that was cool with Melly against him. Let's just hope the beloved Florida artist comes out as innocent and we can continue to get great music from him. And check out this video for me. I know you'll enjoy it.